What's going on guys, it is Panjano here, and today I'm going to bring you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The main purpose of this video is to make sure that you guys can be playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the most optimised frame rates further optimising the game, tweaking the visuals and enhancing performance across the board. You should be seeing good results regardless of what sort of system you're running on, whether that be a low end system, medium end system or a brand new ultra high end system. There are gains to be had across the board. So without further ado, before we get into the video, if you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with the results, please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. If you guys can leave any results, questions, queries, or suggestions for other videos or other games you might wish to see me cover, please do let me know down in that comment section below. And if you guys do enjoy content like this and wish to stay updated instantly whenever I upload, please do consider pressing that subscription button and the bell notification. With all that being said and done, let's get straight into the video to keep this as fast and as simple as possible. So, starting off with inside of the video, what you guys are going to need to go ahead and do is actually navigate down into Steam or whichever platform on which you're going to be using to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and we're going to start off by optimizing the game applications themselves. To start off, what we're going to be doing is simply right-clicking on Shadow of the Tomb Raider inside of Steam, Navigating down to the Properties section, and we're going to start off by turning off the Steam Overlay whilst in game. As especially on lower end and medium end systems and some machines with certain specs, sometimes the Steam Overlay can cause a minor FPS hit, so if you guys are looking to get the most immersion and the best frames possible, I recommend turning this off. Once we've turned the Steam Overlay off, we can navigate over to where it says Local Files, click on Local Files, and we can then find the option for Browse Local Files. Once you guys have clicked that, the folder with your game installation will then open up. We're interested in scrolling all the way down until we find the SOTTR application file. Simply right click on the application file and select properties. With inside of there, we're then going to be going to the compatibility tab and we're going to select the options for disable full screen optimizations. We're going to select change high DPI settings and also overriding the high DPI scaling behavior performed by. Once you guys have done that, press OK, press apply and press OK. What we can then go ahead and do is simply exit out of the folder and we can exit out of the Steam Properties folder. Now if you guys don't already have this game installed to an SSD, that can help out a ton. I'd recommend if you do have an SSD installed to your machine, clearing out some space and installing this game to your SSD whilst you do your playthroughs of it. As the game does have a lot of different textures and a lot of different environments and graphics settings going on, so it is best to be giving it the best read and write speeds possible, so if you can make space in an SSD for this game, you will greatly benefit from installing it to an SSD. For any of you guys who are experiencing any FPS issues or if you're trying to run in DirectX 12 and you're experiencing experiencing some issues, you can see if there is a beta or a beta build available, which might have some optimizations for your game. And you can try these out and see if any are available by right clicking on the game with inside of Steam, going down to properties, going over to the top right where it says betas or betas, going into the drop down menu and seeing if any are available. There should be titled something along the line of build and then you'll find the build number. You can experiment around just by installing them by selecting the build, pressing close and updating the game. Again, that is an experimental tweak. Some people might have better FPS on the original and that's absolutely fine, but I do recommend installing one and just comparing it with your stock one to see which best suits your machine. Another incredibly important tip in which I actually managed to boost my average frame rate by around about 10 frames per second on my AMD based system is actually updating your GPU drivers. Now I know this sounds like a very basic and simple thing to do and so many people brush this off but it is incredibly important when playing AAA games as many GPU drivers actually address many issues that these games might have. So if you guys have not manually updated your GPU drivers since purchasing the game I recommend taking yourself in the description down below and you'll find the AMD Radeon drivers link and you'll also find the Nvidia GeForce driver link. If you guys are on the NVIDIA GeForce card, to find your latest driver it's very simple. Simply navigate to the top of the web page which is displayed, go to automatic driver updates and select the download button. Install the program, it will go ahead and detect and install everything for you and get you up and running on the latest driver. For you AMD Radeon users, it's a very similar process. You'll be going over to the AMD support page found here. You'll then proceed to scroll down, select graphics, and in these menus you'll then select the graphics card on which you're using. So for me that's an AMD Radeon 500 series, RX 500 series, and on this PC I'm running a RX 570. Again, you'll install the driver, download it, it'll detect everything for you and get you up and running. There are also going to be two more videos linked in the description down below. If you wish to follow them, you can experiment around with following them if you wish to do so, and they are not necessary, but they will increase your FPS further if you wish to follow them. And those links are going to take you to the ultimate optimization guides for the AMD Radeon control panel settings and the Nvidia control panel settings. This will help you guys get the most FPS out of your graphics cards on practically every game. It's completely safe to do, will not avoid warranties, and I recommend everyone takes the time out of their day to follow those videos as well. What we can now go ahead and do is actually apply an optimization to Windows itself, which will help further boost performance with inside of Tomb Raider and pretty much any game that you play. I highly recommend following along with these steps as they are just as important as optimizing the game files themselves, and doing so should provide some really good results. So to do this we're going to simply be navigating to the bottom left hand side of our PCs and clicking on the Windows button. Once we've done that we're then going to proceed to type in power, and once you guys have typed in power you're going to look for any of the options with the battery icon with the little cord going around it. As long as it has this logo, simply go ahead and click on it. Once the tab opens up, simply navigate to the top to the directory 
directory and select where it says power options to be brought to the power options directory. What we're then going to be doing is proceeding to go down to the show additional power plans drop down menu and selecting that and you guys should be seeing the balanced power plan, high performance and power saver. For any of you guys on Ryzen based PCs you might be seeing Ryzen based power plans with inside of here but I wouldn't really recommend going with those. The main power plan we're going to want to be going with is the ultimate performance power plan. Now I know most people watching this video are more than likely not going to have this power plan as a selectable option but if you guys are running on Windows 10 you can actually unlock this power plan and to see a video on how to do that it's very quick and easy to do. Just to make this video a little bit shorter I'm going to include it in a card on the top right hand side of the screen now you can click on that card it will take you to that video and show you how to unlock the ultimate performance power plan. If for any reason you don't wish to follow that video even though I highly recommend doing it as it has fixed so many people's performance issues on everything from high-end gaming PCs all the way down to low-end laptops across the board so many people have found positive results from using this. If you don't wish to follow that video and you just wish to follow with what you've already got simply go ahead with the high performance power plan otherwise if you can select the ultimate performance power plan. What we can now go ahead and do is actually boot into Tomb Raider, heading into the settings menu, and we can further tweak and personalize our settings for a decent balance of visual quality and great performance. Simply go over to Tomb Raider and hit play. Starting off with inside of the launcher, what we're going to be doing is heading over to the options tab found here. We're then going to proceed to start off with the display tab. Starting off from the top to the bottom, what I recommend doing is setting to full screen for everyone watching this video. I also recommend setting the exclusive full screen mode as this will help stabilize your frame rates, especially on lower end PCs, but it can help on higher end PCs too. DirectX 12. Now this is going to be an interesting one. If you're not entirely sure if your graphics card supports DirectX 12, or you're on a graphics card that's older than around about two or three years old, your GPU might not be best suited to use the Direct x12 mode. What I'd recommend doing is actually going ahead and turning the DirectX 12 mode off if you're on an older PC, doing a benchmark, seeing what FPS result you get on an average FPS, coming back to this, enabling it, and running a benchmark once again and seeing which gives you better FPS, as there isn't really a staple answer as to which is going to give you better frames. So for me personally, I know that my GPU can support DirectX 12 and can support it well. So I'm going to be enabling DirectX 12. Going down to the stereoscopic mode, we're going to be switching this to the off position. You're then going to select the monitor and the graphics card in which you're using. We can then proceed to set our in-game resolution. Now this is actually going to be a very important option here, especially if you guys are running on medium end systems and lower. There's going to be some resolutions which are going to be recommended on the right hand side of the screen now and you can try out those resolutions to see if they give you better results in achieving the frame rate in which you wish to achieve. This will help you guys keep some of the visual candy up whilst turning down the resolution just slightly to maybe help you achieve those frame rates in which you wish to hit. We can then proceed to go down to the VSync option. You can keep this on if you wish to do so. I personally like to take this off as I don't really care for screen tearing and it can cause input lag and I just personally don't like this. If you really don't like screen tearing then keep this enabled but this can sometimes deteriorate from your FPS. Anti-aliasing is leading us onto one of the most important options with inside of here in terms of visual quality. For any of you guys out there who like a soft image and you don't like the jaggies, you more than likely are going to want to use anti-aliasing. Now most anti-aliasing modes with inside of here are going to take away from your FPS. And in that case, if you are going to use anti-aliasing, I recommend using the TAA option as that is going to be the less performance taxing anti-aliasing option. I wouldn't go with any of the others no matter what sort of PC you're on, so I'd either recommend off if you want the best FPS possible and you don't mind how it looks. But if you must use anti-aliasing, go with TAA or don't use it at all. Once you guys are done setting up your display tab, we can then navigate up to the top to the graphics tab, and this is going to be one of the most important options with inside of here as well. What we're going to be doing is going down to texture quality. Now, unless you're running on something like a high-end 10 series NVIDIA card, I wouldn't recommend going above normal texture quality. Texture filtering, I'd also recommend setting to trilinear. Shadow quality, I would also recommend setting to normal, as this will give you guys the best mix of visual quality and performance. Depth of field, you can turn this off if you don't like the effect, I'd recommend that. But if you must use it and you do like it, I'd set it to normal and I wouldn't set it any higher. Level of detail, once again I recommend setting to normal for the best mix of visual quality and FPS. Ambient occlusion is going to be another important one especially for you guys who like a softer image but this will come with an extreme frame rate tax which I personally don't think is worth it so I would recommend switching this to the off position. Pure hair we're actually going to be going ahead and going to the drop down menu and selecting low for everyone. I wouldn't recommend using any more than this as the FPS hit from it just really isn't worth it. Screen space contact shadows you can turn on if you wish to do so but again this will tax your GPU and will take away from your FPS and for the majority of people, I'd recommend switching this to the off position for the best results. Motion blur, bloom, lens flares, screen effects, volumetric lighting and tessellation can be kept on for most GPUs as the FPS hit from those is only around about 2 to 3 by having all of them on and the visual bump from them is fantastic so I'd recommend keeping all of those on. 
The only one I wouldn't recommend keeping on is screen space reflections, as this does seem to tax the GPU quite heavily, so I'd recommend turning this off if you can. Now remember this is just a guideline as to what I recommend you guys going for, in terms of delivering you guys a balanced mix of visual quality and performance. You can personalise this further if you wish to do so, you can bump some things up, but do expect different results, but for the best and most optimal settings possible for frame rate and visual quality, I'd recommend sticking with these. Once you guys have got that set up, you can go ahead and press OK, and what at this point what I'd recommend doing is going ahead and actually hitting the play button, and once you guys have booted into the game, what I'd recommend doing is just having a look around in the background and seeing in terms of visual quality if you are happy with the game. At this point you can go ahead and actually bump up some things and turn some things down, and just reach that fine balance in which I was talking about, and you can do this by going ahead into the options menu found with inside of the game, navigating into display and graphics, and you can further tweak things inside of the graphics tab found here. As you can see, you can see a decent amount of foliage and other effects going on in the background in which will update pretty much live, just simply go ahead and change the option you want to test out, and press E to apply it. Find the best visual balance with inside of here, and then what I'd recommend doing is heading into the bottom right hand side and running a benchmark. Seeing what your FPS is like, how the game performs, and how the game looks, and from there you can then decide if you want to take things down lower for better FPS, or if you wish to increase them, if you're running at say above 60 FPS, you could probably go ahead and increase a few more options to be hitting around about 60 FPS on average, whilst having more visual candy. And that is how I would personally optimise the game. Now for any of you guys out there who wish to go the extra mile and just further optimise your PC as a whole, I'm going to be including a further optimization which is really easy to apply and it's extremely effective in improving FPS and system performance across the board in pretty much everything you can do on your PC. I've yet to see negative results from this and this comes in the form factor of CPU unparking. There'll be a brief description as to what CPU unparking is and you'll also be able to read up in further detail what CPU unparking does and the benefits of it on the website linked in the description down below. So if you do wish to follow with this part, which I do highly recommend you do, you can navigate into the description down below to the CPU core parking link and it'll bring you to this website here which is codabag.com. With inside of the website link, you'll be able to find a full rundown as to what CPU on parking is, and you can see a brief explanation which is shortened down for any of you guys who can't be bothered to read this in the right hand side of the screen now. So to download and install this program, it's very simple and easy to do. Just simply scroll all the way down to the bottom of the web page until you find the download application executable files tab found here. Once it's then finished downloading, simply go ahead and open up the zip file which is downloaded, and you'll then have the CPU core parking setup version 2120. Simply double click on the setup, and the installation wizard will then open up. Select next, accept the terms to the license agreement, and select next once again, next, and install. After a few moments time the program will be installed, make sure that the launch option down here at the bottom has been selected, and then press finish. After a few moments the program will open up and it should look very similar to this, but your numbers will more than likely be different, and that's absolutely fine. What we're going to be doing is simply starting off by going over to the power data plan found here, going into the drop down menu, and we're going to be matching this option with inside of here to the power plan we set in the previous steps. So earlier on, if you went with the high performance power plan, select high performance. If you went with the ultimate performance power plan, which I highly recommend you do, select the ultimate performance power plan. Once you guys have matched that, you can then simply come down to the core parking index slider found here, grab this blue notch and drag it all the way up to 100%. You can then go over to frequency scaling index, which is going to be the speed of those cores, and again, drag this up to 100%. And last but not least, if you do have the option for Turbo Boost Index, again, drag this up to 100%, but some of you guys won't have this option, and that's absolutely fine. Now, just to bear in mind that this is completely safe to do, this will not increase heat to your system, this will not make your system unstable, and this will not mean that your system is running at 100% usage all the time. It's completely safe, and I've yet to see any machine receive negative results from using this. So once all of these options have been applied, simply go down and press the Apply button. It will notify you that the changes have successfully been applied, simply then go ahead and press OK, and we can then exit out of the program as the optimization is now complete. So regardless of whether or not you guys decided to stick around with the last optimization, it's best practice to now go ahead and actually restart your systems, just to make sure that everything you've changed is fully applied within Windows, and good to go. So we're going to be navigating to the bottom left hand side, clicking the Windows button, right clicking on the Power button, selecting the restart button, coming back to this video, opening up Steam, and getting ready to continue on with the last and final step. So now that you guys have restarted your machines, you're now logged back on, Steam is open and everything's ready to go, what we can now go ahead and do is simply boot into the game, load into the options menu, run a benchmark, and see what results we've got. And there you guys have it, there's my ultimate FPS increase guide for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. If you guys did enjoy this video and you are happy with the results you've got from this video, please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously, alongside sharing this around with any friends, family, or anyone that you find can benefit from the optimizations included in this video and for any of you guys out there who wish to follow other guides on other games to see how to get the best fps on practically most games out there for the pc and other tech tutorials on how to get the most out of your stuff without having to spend a penny make sure that you do take some time to browse around the channel and subscribe and press that bell notification to be instantly notified when i upload and if there isn't anything on the channel which i haven't covered and you would like to see me cover let me know down in that comment section down below of any suggestions questions queries and of course your results thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video guys i've been Panjano, and i'm out